been top fragging in a lot of occasions for Team 1. He's not the guy you look to to be at the top. You want your mobs, your pesadellos, and your IDKs to be up at the top of the scoreboard. Maluk, it's nice when he's hitting shots, but he's not going to be usually like your Fallen of the Old, where he is towards the top of the scoreboard fighting with Cold Zera. You want him to be more of a steadier opper as we hop into Inferno here. It will be Team 1 on the T side, so that op will have a little less effect. KNG, of course, going to want to get his into the early going. Plenty of utility here for Team 1. Double flashes and double smokes. A Molotov in the hands of Pesadello. No upgraded pistols for either side. A kit and a smoke for Nikiz. And a Brackets pop coming in from Team 1. A lot of control. And a little bit of damage done KNG with the opening kill and a chance for more on the balcony. No, IDK has actually finished off KNG. Kike and another comes through, make it two for him. It's a double for the two players on the balcony. And that's going to be an easy wipe up there for the Oplano side. The pistol round will not trouble them. It will not. A lot of speed meets a lot of resistance. Very well done from the CT side in that opening pistol round. A very swift rebuke and... Bomb plant makes things a little bit more dicey here. Oplano, solid start, and that means Team 1 are going to be on pistols. One Deagle invested for mobs. Again, a player we want to see get activated. He's the youngest player on the, the team in terms of time on the roster. If we can see Team 1 activate him as an individual, they could very well take this one away from Oplano. I like this aggressiveness from Yeldo, probing all the way down into logs. He's trying to get a lot of the information and also just be a very easy way to farm money. Kaike is sitting up towards the half wall, being support for him. And it's a slower Glock round for Team 1, surprising enough, because, I mean, they only have Glocks. But they're really taking their sweet time with it. Slow and steady. Use their numbers here, but Mob is a little bit ahead. He's trying to be the spear point with that deagle. It won't find anything though. Yell instead opens things up very well done from him on the MP9. Now team one kinda have to look around, kinda have to try to find an opening, and it's just not going to be given to them. Yell finds yet another one on one duel. You can't be giving that to the MP9 here. He's just going to harvest cash. A little long last combined with two different angles, but KNG finds one across the map, and Yell finds the final two. That is a clean victory for Oplano, and a lot of cash harvested for Yell. That is 600 times 4, $2,400 from kills, not including the actual bonus for winning. Yeah, the win bonus is going to be good. The kill bonus is already equivalent to a uh, third-round loss situation, so <laughs> I think he'll be fine with that. Now the AKs are going to come in hand, though, for Team 1. Maul was relegated to a Galil as he did not find a shot with the Deagle or a kill. He didn't really do anything with it. He didn't even fire off ones. It's the bonus round for Oplano. But there's opportunity to really build up with that bonus. The MP9's close range on a map like Inferno can definitely do some serious damage. KNG on a Famas, but in his hands, I don't really think it's going to be all too bad. I mean, he hits a lot of headshots. That's what you got to do with the Famas. You got to hit a couple double dinks. Nikki's flashed forward, trying to take the fight to the AKs that await him on the other side of Banana. And Nikki's mere presence is enough to force Team 1 back and away. They've given up this Banana control they had and are starting to spread out more towards an A-side take. Team 1 made the... the Tiniest bit of resistance are forced all the way back down, Banana. They're very pensive on this round. Whether it should be to starve the opponents of information or something else. It, I guess the, t the timing on that fall away really did work because Nekis went for the spot over the smoke and he saw nobody. So that really does kind of starve the CTs out of the information they might have hoped to have. And here comes the take. Two MP9s to hold. Your Nekis doesn't quite get the spray down, but Yell does. Yell two on the flash players. Pesadella will drop Nekis in the meanwhile, but the Molotov has been dropped in turn. Three remaining players all on AKs will try to entry back in. They will get one, but now they're kind of stuck in this site. Oplano already knocking on the door. The Molotov will finish off the planter. Palm's not planted as a result, and the boost is coming through as well. It will spot the bomb carrier. Pesadello taken out of the round. It's just IDK, and what can he really do? He's found one, but he's been spammed away in the meanwhile. Down to a paltry 11, and this just seems like an unwinnable situation. There's no way they're going to give him a one versus one duel there. Here, they're going to walk into it. They're going to find the kill. No bomb plant either, might I add. And that is a very clean start. The cleanest of starts you could really ask for, realistically, as a player on a plano. Yeah, it's looking good for them so far. Starting things off very well. And Team 1 will probably not invest too much into this next round. Maybe a couple of pistols. Yeah, Tech 9s across the board. 
Three players have a vest as well, but it, overall, it's just really not something that you're going to look to to strike fear or even get a bomb plant out of. Oplano have been able to counter everything well. They have full rifles now, and for the most part, their money is secured. A little bit of alt control from Team 1 as all five players are marching their way on up. But Oplano are just kind of sitting back and waiting for this take to come. They're not quite yet kicking it into cruise control, but it's getting darn close in the early going. They are showing that they are looking for that spot in the one-on-one -on -one side. And team 1, yeah, they've been able to beat up on some domestic North American competition, but Oplano, they're here. They might not have a lot of maps on record. It is very early to be hyping them up, I think, this high, but there is a good spray on the TRK. Yeah, we'll find IDK. He's all the way down banana. And yeah, this round, it should be bookended nicely by Oplano. It should be, but should is the key word. Yell finds another at range. Now, I did want to say at the start of this round that this is the pistol round map. If you're going to have a pistol round victory, it's going to be on this map. There's just so many choke points, so many areas you can just rush with the Tech 9s and find success. But I'm glad I didn't say it at the start because none of that happened. Zero kills, in fact, in favor of the Tech 9s. Very well handled by Oplano. Uh, they have an auto sniper. Uh, it was a miss by. It was a miss by. They're trying to throw it out of the map as best they can. Oh, no. And that's a lot of damage done to the economy by an unforced yeah. error, I would say. They might have been going for the op, but even then, I doubt it. They had full rifles across the board. There was no reason to, to upgrade to the op as of yet. And so that, that scar is a very, very potent miss by as a result. Now, even if you are Team 1, are you going to realistically pick that up and use it? Probably not. No. Yeah, so it's just economic damage. It's throwing away five grand. Which... It's like killing a player, realistically. Yeah. If they had body armor and an M4 and a little bit of utility left, that's that's 5k right there. 2900 yep. for an A1S, 650 for the Kevlar, a Molotov and a kit. Probably gets you pretty close there. So yeah, it's, it's technically like taking down a player, which is actually a pretty big deal in terms of unforced errors. Oplano, though, getting scary, getting uh, dicey, I would say, with their setups. They're getting a little bit more... Dynamic. I'm going to use that word again. Changing things up. Two in towards the A apartment halls. And Team 1 just showing a bit of fake presence over towards B. Actually, maybe not so fake. They're beginning to group up again. And they are looking to re-exec after that little bit of utility is thrown their way. But Oplano have read this perfectly. They are playing in the apartments for that early information. And now they have the luxury of putting three on the B side as the take comes to the KNG on top. Looking for something, but Mobs is the one that opened it up. Yell finds a trade pace, and Elle finds one in kind, and TRK finds another. Team 1 have it long last cracked open a sight, and Oplano in the 2 versus 4, do they even try to go for this? Piriahia just picked up the scar. Why? To make sure it doesn't get picked up by Team 1, presumably. That would be my, my guess. But if they're not going to use it, then they should be throwing uh, it out of the map. Unless they're going to use it next round. Unless they're going to use it next round, which... Honestly, it's very tantalizing. If we can see a scar in the next round, I'm, I'm excited to oh see what could happen. A Instead scar round, in round six. Would have been a scar in round five, realistically speaking. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a scar used in a serious match like this at this stage of a game. Or this the G3 the whatever, the T-sided auto. The G3 SG1. That I one. Say. Yeah. Scar 20 and G3 S. I want to say it's that. I could be totally wrong. You might be right. It's kind of a popular game in video game culture. It's, I'm right. There we go. I'm confident. Never mind. I'm right. Four I to one, know. though. I don't use the autos. I'd oh, rather have You're giving me false confidence, man. You can't do that. You can't do that. They have an op to complement it. Oh, my. An op and an auto sniper. What is this setup? Two peas in a pod, baby. Two peas in a pod. Let's go. I, I hate what? this because it's probably going to work. And I don't want to see an auto sniper meta. That's the one thing I don't want to see. Is what auto strat sniper. We got Bruin. What strat that we got Bruin? I'm incredibly excited to see this. Yell at 193 with ADR with nine kills as well, taking the mantle of auto sniper. This is going to be interesting. And it's going to be so brutal once it makes it sound to the, to the Dak Dak, Dak Dak Dak, and it gets taken down, doing nothing at all. And that's probably why we don't see the auto sniper all too often, isn't it? Worth the shot, I guess. Worth the shot. Or four or five, however many it took. That's true. Very unfortunate. I wanted to see it find success. Clearly, that wasn't going to be the case. It wasn't meant to be. And team one, they're not going to go towards me. They've done it twice already. They've done it a myriad of times. 
with mixed results. Of course, their first victory yep. coming from it. The question is, will they expect the op of KNG to be so aggressive? He's already posted on the angle. Small time as well. He's actually just going to fall away. Rotation will be coming through from Nikki's, but the question is, will it be in time? And will KNG offer enough resistance here with the op? Good flash. He won't hit the flick, but he will survive at the very least. Here you're now here to try and pick up the pieces. He finds only one, though. Cherokee trades him out. Now Nikki's is in the back lines. He'll find one, as will KNG. KNG, nice flick on the second. The last one's tight as well. It doesn't matter. The op will get it done. KNG, he missed the first opportunity over towards the lane, but he more than makes up for it on the site. Yeah, that was a great sight hold from KNG. You can already see him getting hyped, too. He's been around the block. He knows what it's like. And that second and third shot's absolutely ludicrous. Just staying alive. And Oh, Plano. Up 5-1 now on Team 1. A timeout probably pretty likely for him. Luke will grab the op. He has yet to open his account. And really, nobody on Team 1 has done too much. The auto, it's been removed, so we don't have to worry about seeing that thing anymore. That's going to haunt my nightmares for the next uh, who knows how long. But KNG gonna try and haunt Team 1, he does so! Peaks down, bottom, middle, strikes onto Maluk, and that's the op purchase for Team 1. Done and dusted with zero impact at all, and he's rotated into apps to pick up the MAC-10. He's everywhere on A, and Team 1... They can't really find a way even into the sights the way things are looking. This T side needs to get fixed and fast, or things are gonna look very dangerous for them moving forward. Very dangerous. KNG again on the site now with the op. TRK will drop his wingman, sure, but the op is still present. Kaiko, he drops mobs. That heavy hitter we wanted to get active yet to do so. And KNG on the site, another opportunity to show some flicks off. He'll find one, but only one. TRK, one in a second. Okay, he drops the player flanking in the apartments. Very well read from him. Still two more to find, but he does have some breathing room now. He'll get the bomb down and he'll start that timer. The question is, will you expect the keys so close taking the one on one duel? He hears the steps, and now TRK has a big opportunity to find a one on one. He'll jump up. He'll try to find it. No, and the keys is the one to close it out. And Oplano continue their tear six to one. But that was a very close round thing. Very close round, but close, but no cigar for Team One. Yeah, they got a bomb down, but in the grand scheme of things, it's still a sixth round to Oplano and a paltry one for Team One. Yeah, it does say one at the top there. They want that at the end of the map in their favor. Not on the scoreboard here now. KNG really heating up with the op, though. That's the scary proposition going up against this Oplano roster, is if KNG hits his groove with the big green gun, he is going to stick you full of 50 caliber rounds. And he's done just that. Yell's been great with the rifle. Really, there's been no weakness for Oplano. As a matter of fact, zero players on their roster are negative in terms of KD. Fast banana play will be stalled out by the Molotov. It'll be stopped because of the utility. There's a three-player lean towards the B side, as a matter of fact. The op was one of those, and KNG's just going to sit up and towards CT. It looks like the gamble might pay off here for Oplano. They're originally just going to go send KNG down banana, but it's going to be Nekis and KNG for a two-for-one trade. And T1 look content to try and force the issue here. KNG's just going to spray through the smoke, try and hit the shots. The nade will do a little on to IDK. Team 1 don't need to commit to this, and in fact, it might be better off if they fell off of this, because as it stands, they are just getting hounded down by their opposition. Well, Plano seem to be a step ahead of their opponents here. But Team 1 are going to re-exec all three players now grouped up. Here comes the utility. Kanji's going to be smoked off short, but he's going to smoke in front of that. Cross into the site and now support his teammate. Very good shot on the first. 12 kills now. 13 kills now. Another... Perhaps on the cards, he's watching for the exact angle. Misses the shot, but still another opportunity. In the meanwhile, spam comes through. Yell harassing him from the back lines is the one to cap it off. And Oplano, 7-1. to one. That round looked rather easy as well. Only one lo player lost there. And that's now two players above 180R for Oplano. And the third close. Here we are. I can't even say his name. Piria is what I'm going to go with. Piria Jr. Uh, it might be a, a little bit of a reduction in his name, but... Um, He's had a very solid performance as well. He was at 100 the round before. Of course, got no action there, and so lost a bit of that ADR. I'm actually not too sure what the proper pronunciation is for his name. I wish we had an interview I would ask for it, because I would like to know how to properly say his name. Same. 100%. My best guess is Piriayir, because the J... But it's Portuguese, yeah, it's not Spanish. it's Portuguese, it's, it's not different. Spanish. It's, 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 yeah. it's up in the air. It's up in the air. Yep. I think uh, Piria is going to be good for now. It could yeah. actually just be Piria. It, it could be like Piria Jr., like an Amar Jr. style. Who knows? Yeah. 
Yep, we'll have that. I have to ask, honestly. Yeah. We need to find a way to figure out how that's supposed to be pronounced and what the proper pronunciation is. We'll use some Twitter clout. We'll send him a DM. <laughs> Surely he'll respond. Either way, we're into the round. It's pistols. Can't really expect too much from Team 1 here, given just the wall they've been running into with extreme consistency. Three Deagles, though, is an opportunity. Never come on a team like this with the raw firepower and the Deagles in hand. Again, this is a map where the pistols can shine if given an opportunity and a little bit of luck. Here comes these action plays before it can get time. Not nearly as quick on it. Yell only good for one. It's trades into the site. Deagles ring through, ring true. Now the op is locked down. It won't find a lucky shot for the smoke. It'll try though. It'll definitely try. But instead it gets shots in return. Pesa Dello takes down KNG and team one an advantage for the first time in a long time. Kaike around the smoke trying to find something, but TRK is watching for it. The shoulder is spotted. Kaike one, TRK a trade. 1v2 for Pedia. It's a good nade. TRK down to six. This is a big opportunity. He rushes forward. He stops the player in towards water. He'll get the kill, but IDK towards Banana is quick on the trade. Team one at long last. Find a second to put on the board. But can they turn that into more? That's the question. That's a big question. And the thing is, that pistol round, yes, it's a pistol round. But are they replicable? No. The other problem, they only had one alive at the end of it all when it probably would have been a bit stronger otherwise. It should have been a bit stronger, especially after that trace on the KNG. But now it's going to be KNG, not on the op as the money's actually pretty severely damaged for Oplano, but he's going to flash his way down middle, strike for the first, and now Yellow's going to hold the line, spray down one in almost a second. He does get traded, and IDK will finish off KNG, but now Pity is coming in through the back lines, through bedroom, and he's put three to sleep, up from the balcony and down to the ground. Eight rounds of the board for Oplano, and the two round victories for Team 1 are isolated from each other. And that's never a good sign in Counter-Strike. If you can't string anything together, you are going to struggle. Great read from Piria to back up his teammates who had gone aggressive down mid, both Yell and KNG. And Team 1 back to the drawing board again. Maluk limited to a Deagle, and that is it. And the Utility, yeah, they have a bunch of flashes and smokes, but the Molotons, the HEs, they're not there for the T side. And this one might not be a live round, because teams are yeah. just standing around in spawn. I think we're getting a Medic. We're definitely going to get a match, Medic, here. No doubt about that at this point. You can hear the chats scrolling by as well. And I must say, proverbial fish in a barrel in that prior round. Oplano, despite finally falling in the round before last, they still have the confidence to go for a different play. Again, props to them for playing their own game, not getting in their own heads here. Again, scoreline 8-2, to two, very dominant in their favor. And still... I do think right now it's an Oplano game through and through. We have yet to see Team 1 secure more than one round in a row. And that is very worrisome if you're a Team 1 fan. It's very concerning for Team 1. And the thing is, too, we haven't really seen their individuals be able to shine. They're being suffocated by Oplano just taking very aggressive fights. But the thing is, too, for Oplano, they're not overextending either. They're playing rather measured which is a good sign. It's similar to how he's on Nouns dominating Infinity on Nuke, with some aggressive fights, usually with Flashes or a teammate, but they never really go too far. KNG did go a little too aggressive last round. You could say Yell did as well, but they were picking together in that instance. It was still a teamed aggression. Looks like everyone's readying up, and things are going to be back to go pretty quickly. Ah, looks like somebody spilled something on the desk or just wiping down. Maybe it's hot in there. Who knows? Could be the sweat. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of pressure. Who really knows? Either way, it looks like we are indeed ready to get back in the action. I can hear the players reinvesting. Hopefully sooner rather than later, we will be back into the action. Fist bumps going unacknowledged. There we go. That's what we'd love to see. Team Chem is up. Hopefully. Hopefully everything has been resolved, although... It is taking a little bit while, a little while longer, but it looks like they are communicating. So I think we are at least close to being back into the action. Yeah, we should just be waiting for that attack to expire. Yes, we are. The timer is ticking down, and we can get back into it. Maluk back on the Deagle, the Galil for Pesadello, the AKs across the rest of the Team One side. KNG, of course, getting the op at every possible moment. And he's going to go swinging with the proper big green. 
looks for the pick, but doesn't take it, doesn't stick around too long either, doesn't want to get caught from an alt mid push, and a wise decision seeing how many Team 1 members were training that direction. Brackets control being taken once again by Team 1 as they'll flash their way through the smoke and split up two to a side. And Yell, he's the first point of contact, he's got a rotation coming through, he can't get the first kill, it's Molbs to help out IDK. But KNG still on site is a tough nut to crack. Look at the rotations from Oplano. It's an overextension here, and if they're not careful, the B site can be caught off guard and be opened up. And instead, they might just break this two-on-two -two here. Kaike in the keys to hold the B site, at least for Kaike. He's in a fast rotation on Speedway. Yep, it's going to have to be a quick adjustment from Oplano. Maybe catch a kill through the smoke on the entry. Here comes the keys with that span I mentioned before. None of it landing, though. Very unfortunate. It's going to be a, a rather difficult four versus five retake, but Team One, they save. don't really have the... It is going to be a save, but they didn't have the utility to, to bar entry. They didn't have any more smokes. They didn't have any more Molotovs. This would have been a feasible retake, all things considered. But the money on Oplano is so bad, they have to play the odds here. They don't this know the true. economy situation for Team One. They don't know how many pieces of utility they have left. They just know that they have... 2k on the keys, 850 on K and G, 900 on Piria, Yell at 1100. They just don't have money. They have to save here. And Team 1 have been gifted something. They've been gifted wiggle room. And more importantly, they've been given an opportunity to close this gap on the T side, get to 5, get to 6 rounds, and try and put a squeeze on Oplano. Keep this one close. That's the thing with the economy on the CT side, on a map like Inferno in particular. There's certain maps, Inferno, Nuke, where the utility is so critical on the CT side. You need so many Molotovs, HEs, Smokes, to just deny that early map control. That if you don't have the economy, you put yourself in a very awkward spot. And Oplano are finding themselves there now. And Inferno has another name. It is also known as Save Simulator. We're on pace to start seeing that occur here, unless Oplano can keep the Team 1 rounds isolated again. Yeah, they need to punish in some way, whether it be with the op of KNG, some spam like here from Bidia, or something else even more audacious, like that middle push we saw in that proverbial fish in a barrel round I mentioned before. Team 1, though, are being given the space to run their default in towards the apartments. It's a heavy lean towards A once again, as they're looking to maybe find that pick once more. The Opto's on the balcony, and this is a tight angle, but an angle that can find tremendous success. The issue is it's been full-blinded. IDK will find the opening. Good trade from KNG, but Malbs answers the kill on Kaike. Now KNG's isolated in the apartments with the op. He has a very narrow window of opportunity. He just can't seize it. It's Pesadello to find the trade. And two versus four might again start the simulation, the save simulation, as both Nikiz and Yell cut ties with this round. And you really don't want to try and retake the ace site much on Inferno. It is now officially, statistically, the hardest site to retake in Counter-Strike. It has taken over the B-Site Dust 2 moniker of being that site that, eh, it's B-Site crap, that's the round. A-Site Inferno has taken over that na that mantle. So, Oplano, back-to-back -back saves now. Save Simulator is kicking up. It's booting up, and we're ready to go. Save Simulator 2022 edition. But Team 1 are starting to find answers, and Molbs is starting to come alive a little bit as well, which is a good sign for Team 1 moving forward through the course of this tournament, not just the course of this game. I mean, Molbs just brings me back to when Infinity were playing in ESL Pro League back in Season 9. Molbs was the only guy doing anything on that roster. So it's good to see him back at this kind of a stage again. Been on the Mobs bandwagon since season nine of the ASL Pro League. So get long in line, time folks. Ago. Yeah, but long time. Oplano calling this timeout. It's a good time to settle. It's not out of their reach to get a dominating half score line. Even ten would be very good for them. But with Team One gaining more confidence, issues start to arise here for Oplano. And gaps are being exposed. The lack of a, of a proper full buy here is going to harm them as well. P250s and the saved M4 and AK. Team 1 should be getting a 5th. They need to be getting a 5th out of this one. String 3 together and see what more you can do before the guns come back for Oplano. Ooh. Well then, <laughs> that's a start. 
quite the start to this smoke. A little bit of luck to start things off. The rifle will be recovered. But still, Team 1 again finding the opening. And now they've been given a lot of room to work with as a result. Oplano going for the gamble stack. They notice every time there's a pick towards A, Team 1 go towards B. It's one of their major tendencies. So, Oplano gambling in on that read will stack the B site. I like this call, and it might actually pay off as a trio of players is beginning to slowly snake their way up the banana. The bomb is still down back T spawn. So they can go either site still. They're looking for an opening. They're looking for an entry. They're looking for an area to exploit. Smoke is down for CT. But Team 1 still have plenty of utility left. That opening kill gives them a lot more room. Although Pitya has picked up the M4. Ground to be gained towards A. And actually it's a full gamble stack towards B from Oplan. I didn't realize they completely abandoned the A site in the meantime. Are Team 1 doubling back to B? They're going to walk into the stack, Nate. They thought that Oplano would have rotated. Instead, they're going to walk into the four-man stack. This could end so poorly for Team 1. It's going to be a brawl to the finish, and there's no mollies to clear out angles such as Dark. Yeah, this is one of their tendencies. They like to go back towards B when they get a pick towards A, and Kaike lines up two with a P250. Biria lines up a third, and it's just IDK trying to entry, and little does he know there's all three players waiting for him. He'll find the first, sure. Maluka at his backside. They really do. Nike's totally unexpected in towards dark. That's an easy pair of kills on the AK. And that is Oplano taking around they probably shouldn't have by virtue of reading the tendencies of Team 1. Yeah, that's just a good read from Oplano. And Team 1, they outthought themselves there. They didn't really send in a probe either. It's just, all right. We've thrown a bit of a fake. They're going to rotate here now, guys. So uh, let's go the other direction. It's being too smart for your own good, in a sense, for Team 1. And it cost them a round that they should have won. And if they would have won, would have put them on the fast track to a solid half. Now they've given Oplano 9. They've given Oplano confidence again. And more importantly, they've given K and G an op again. So he's got that back in his hands. Pace is going to burn down to 25 HP. It's still a five on five, but team one look a little muted after that round. They look a little shocked, not quite full shell shock, but they're a little, they're a little stunned, a little stumbly. The and cracks will begin to show. Ooh. Yeah, a golden opportunity for Yelp, not exploited. The Maluka and the meanwhile drops Kaike, and the spam from IDK does connect. Pidia now on the flank. Has to do a lot. He's found the first, but he needs to find more. It's a two versus three situation, and if they don't find a kill in the next, say, five to ten seconds, they might just call the save instead. Pedia trying to go forward, trying to find something, but all these players are entrenched into the site. He's going to try to throw a smoke, try to throw some sort of retake utility. But this truly does seem like an unwinnable round. He's going to grab the op, and they're going to save for a double op setup for round number 15. Pidia might be able to get an exit. KNG's op is removed, though. Pidia taken oh. down as well. And, well, yeah, IDK might fall, but that is well worth the trouble. Look at what Oplan will have to fight with in this round now. 1,700, 1,750 on Kaike and Pidia. Nekiz at 28. Only Yell and KNG with relatively anything to work with. And KNG won't even go for the glass cannon. It's a wise decision there. Get the M4, get the armor. Now, foregoing a helmet probably would have been the better course for more utility. An extra flashbang could have been picked up that way. The keys on a scout, a P250, a 5-7 on PDR. Kaike. And Team 1. This is their opportunity. They can't, they've already dropped multiple. They cannot drop another. Yo! Okay. Picked up two! KNG down middle for a third! And Maluki now in a one-on-four with no HP to fight with not the right gun for this situation. Oh, Plano! Throw any plan Team 1 had of a 9-6 out the window as they, bought, they just rush down middle. They bully Team 1. And through the smoke, Maluki falls 10-5 into the half. We'll see you in three minutes.
Good afternoon or good evening. Welcome back after that brief halftime break. I'm Pineapple Phillips, joined by Boggs here to bring you the second half action. Team one mounted a bit of a comeback, but Oplano capped off the half with a convincing and aggressive CT side victory despite their lackluster investment. Now in the second half, all momentum is reset. We're back to pistols and we have a double dually setup for team one on the CT side. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Give me all the duallys. I love the dual Berettas. I love them in the tight angles like this from IDK. This round is making me very happy. And Kaike will run into the first dual Beretta. IDK will just tap away. Ward him off with some shots across the bow. They'll splash in the water. But that doesn't mean Oplano are going to deny this A take. They still want to go for it. Unless they can find the opening pick on B where there's only one player. It is Malbs. Team 1. This is a must-win pistol for them, and Pesa has spotted KNG, which means he's been spotted as well. A little bit of damage going back and forth. Kaike swings out Why There's TR... IDK, rather, but Maluk and Pesadello have fallen. TRK, in the meantime, will trade it back at long last. The duelies can come back. IDK, there he is with the backstab, but the bomb is not yet planted, and the keys can't quite yet cross. Pedia is going to come forward, maybe get the butt of the stomp on Boiler. No! Loses out to IDK. Those duelies putting in the work right now for Team 1. And that key's in a one-on-three. Will do what he can to save the day. But what can he do here? He runs into the duelies! He does get the opening kill. Now he can get the bomb down. Still has two to worry about, though. I think he's paranoid about that flank. He does catch him, though. He does entice him in. And TRK now has been spotted as well. Nekis, he has the requisite information required. Now, can he get the kill? That's the question. It would be a massive Ooh. 1v3, but no, TRK at range with the USP finds it. The critical factor for those duelies in the apartments was that they were super soldiers. They were not regular. They did not just buy duelies for themselves. They were dropped those duelies and bought Kevlar. That makes them not so squishy. It makes them very, very uh, resistant to body shots from the Glocks. And that's really what saved IDK in towards Boiler. If that had not occurred, if he didn't have the Kevlar, we could have a very different situation on our hands. That's a very good point, Nate, and it would have really completely flipped everything around for for Oplano's favor, and for Team 1, it could have completely kept them on the outside looking in. But for Oplano, four kills plus the bomb plant means they can force up the Galils are in hand, the Keys is an AK with full armor. Yell and Kaike, Tech 9s and armor as well, a good amount of utility for both of those two players. So a good amount of utility overall for Oplano. And Team 1, they have three MP9s in this round. The M4 and the FAMAS. No defuse kits. It's not a great buy here for the CT side. It's a bit of a concerning one, as a matter of fact. And if they're not careful, Oplano can give themselves 12 with a victory right here and now. Team 1 need to find a way to win this, and win this without really losing more than two players. Yep. Keep in mind, none of these players on the T side are lacking helmets. They all have brain mm -hmm. buckets. They're all going to be not one-shot headshots here for any weapon. So that makes things all the more difficult, especially for those MP9s. You're not going to get that head bob. You're not going to get any luck from those. TRK, though, he's the one to start things off right. He catches Yell. And so Oplano will look elsewhere. They'll begin to rotate over towards B. If they're quick, they could beat the rotation here and find an open bomb site, but they're not going to be that eager. They're going to instead slow things down and take a measured approach, which might be to their detriment. Molotov's well timed for Malbs, and he does spam down one more. Kai gets flashes and help out. Malbs goes aggressive, but he will get punished for trying to grab the gun. Pesadella will just tuck into first oranges. Wait for his rotation to come through. Now he gets them both clearing out CT spawn, and Pesa will mop up both. Only one casualty on the anti force, and that is a good result for Team 1. They need more of that if they want to make this map their favor. Again, PL1's very unpredictable. Anything can really happen. There's not really margin for error in a best-of-one scenario. Because, yeah, sometimes there are rounds that can completely change the whole scope of a map, but not necessarily a series. Team 1. They've given themselves a chance. This should be a free round, but there are a few deagles for Oplano. Three to be exact, and a P250 on KNG. The AK's in the hands of Pace, though that's going to be a bit of a boost, and IDK is going to go on forward, steal the kill from the SMG of Malbs. Which I think you want the SMGs to be getting all these kills here against the unarmored pistol players, but... The kill is the kill, the round is the round. Still a two-round deficit if this one is converted for Team 1 when Oplano get the guns. 
Team One doing very well for themselves thus far in the CP side. Past that major trial in the round prior. And now the main goal is to make this one clean as well. The issue is they've already lost two. The SMGs are down and the B bomb side as well is now opened up. Oplano have a big opportunity here. They have an MP9, they have a PT-50, and they have a Glock. They have gotten the bomb across as well, which is very important given the lack of a smoke. The question is, can they hold it down? What miracle can they pull off in this retake? They have no utility, they have no Kevlar, they have a Deagle, a PT-50, and an MP9. This Deagle probably will have to find a shot at long range to really give them any hope in this one. I mean, I still feel like this is a winnable round, especially with that flank coming through from KNG. He's gone in silently. The deck keys has won. The P250 will help out soften TRKs in a 1 HP, 1 on 3. He's got the first. He's going to save. And this is a round Team 1 could not lose. They legitimately could not afford to lose this round. And Oplano find a way with Deagles. P250. No armor. And the Glock. To not only get a bomb down, but to win the round. They don't survive with anybody alive. But it does not matter. That smile says it all. That is a massive win for Oplano and for Team 1. That could sink the battleship here. The timeout, more than appropriate in this situation. That's a gutting loss. Oplano continuing to pull rounds out of the hat. They've done it multiple times now. Whether it be pressing down middle in response to a loss and on a less than ideal buy, or in this case, literally pistols finding victories. Very well done from Oplano. There's not a round that they're not dangerous in. Every single round could be something where they flip the script, where they flip and upset your expectations. Very well done from them. Again, Oplano is making this an uncomfortable one for Team 1. Team 1 will have an investment now. They have 5 M4s, good utility. Team 1 Oplano have to fully reinvest as well. They're not used to that new bomb radius on Inferno. And so they'll have, they'll still nonetheless have those full AKs and full utility. It was a save in the round prior, so they had plenty of money to go for this investment. Now the issue is, can Team 1 go toe-to-toe -to -toe on an even buy here? Well, they couldn't do it against the pistol. But Malms will go aggressive. He's been flashed, and he does escape alive to Sandbags. Does a little more on a KNG as well, who is forced to retreat to logs. Malms will back away and just narrowly miss death as KNG was spamming the right area around the smoke. TRK... Holding anti-flash angle as Maluk there as well. He's up on top of port. And if he's not cleared, he will be cleared though. Nice job by Nikiz to dot his T is a dot his eyes and cross his T's. I don't think we're dotting T's here. But IDK getting one back makes this possible. Maluk has it all to do now. He has his rotation from library, but he's gotta get the kill. And Pidia will finish him off. Pesadello comes through. And Pesadello only one. It's a low HP mobs and mobs. They need a hero. Can he be the hero in the edge of the night? He's gotta be strong and he's gotta be fast! But he cannot win the fight. Oplano. It's almost time to kick in cruise control, Nate. Because they're on the Autobahn. This is wide open highway. Yep, they're getting closer and closer. Four rounds will do it for them. And of course, their buy is actually less than ideal. It's not as good as I would have anticipated. They could have asked for some rifles to be dropped, but they're reading into the economy. Kaike, more than happy with a Galil against helmetless opponents, and Yell, more than happy to harvest some cash on a Mac 10. Perfectly red economic situation for Team 1 and Oplano. They get a little bit of extra cash as a result. KMG starts things off well. The pistol will be recovered, but Pacedel takes a lot of damage for it. Oplano, the main goal is to keep the shot clean and flawless, and they are doing a good job of that thus far. He's another secured with the AK, making short work of these opponents. Pidia, through the apartments, finds another on the TRK. It's just Pesadello with that recovered Deagle. He might find a nice one. He almost did there, but no, Kanji's quicker on the trigger. And that is a succinct and flawless victory for Oplano. Doesn't get much easier than that for Oplano. That's just going to continue to pile on the pressure on Team 1. Another timeout, third of four being used now. No Plano. They can relax a little bit more, stretch out, chill. You'll need three more, and this is your game. And you avoid that very dangerous 0-2 position. Team 1. Not find it easy to battle back from there. I'm wondering what the potential matchups would be, too. Of course, Infinity is there in the 0 and 1 or the 0 and 2 side. I believe Arctic is there as well, with ETK taking them down. So, so question as to what the matchups would be. 
zero zero nation currently up against Isaris, and one that's probably a pretty tight one as well. That one could be back and forth. One of those two teams will join one of these two teams in the 0-2 side. So it's not going to be easy even in the 0-2 for Team 1. You don't want to go down. It's not going to be easy for anybody in the 0-2. No. He might have the best of three as well, so teams that aren't too confident in their map pool are going to struggle even more when it comes to those uh, do-or-die matchups. Oplano. Running a default here. They have a player lurking over towards A and towards, I believe, the T apartments. And look at the squad, meanwhile, getting control of the banana. Some resistance being offered. Some good utility thrown for a retake of banana, but Team 1 aren't going to act upon it. They're instead just going to sit towards the bottleneck, towards the choke point. And in the meanwhile, Oplano are going to shift gears. They're going to look elsewhere, run their default, slowly pressure away Team 1, and then go for their take based on whatever information they can find. Yeah, spraying away, not finding any damage. In fact, three, four of his teammates eating a bunch of nade damage out towards top middle. All around the half HP mark. That's a good start for Team 1. It gives them a little bit of life. Of course, they don't know that yet. But it gives them an opportunity. It gives them a chance here. KNG getting pushed on forward. And AK Hydroponic. You don't see that one every day. I haven't seen that one in a long time. That's a throwback. Yeah. Wasn't that in the same collection as the Akihabara as well? Came out at the same time, I think. And then here we go, the Trident True Classic, the M4A1S, stock standard with some stickers. Here comes the play over towards A, but it's a crossfire established with the balcony and the player on side, IDK. Not sure where he is, but he'll still find that kill and another for good measure. Just KNG lurking over towards the arches. 10 seconds and five to find. It is truly an impossible task. He knows that as well as I do going to save his weapon for the following and team one slowly starting to claw back into it but still a considerable way to go trailing by five good individual effort from idk trk supporting as well from balcony but idk stepping it up big time for his squad in fact really been the major bright spot for team one he needs a little support, though. TRK's been there, here and there. Same with Besadello. But you really want to see one more player up there punching with the same kind of power and pressure that is provided by IDK. Guns, of course, back in the hands of Oplano. They got AKs across the board. I believe KNG did have to drop one, though. The nade will do four points of damage. Oh, they could have had better, but the Maluki AK needs to strike here now. The nade will do a bit of damage. The Molotov will hold them at bay for a little bit longer. But Piria coming in through balcony is looking for somebody to cross back on Arches. The Molotov will force TRK away as well. But Baluk with the spam from library does drop KNG. That's a start for Team 1. IDK on side again needs a second, and he does. TRK and Maluki finding kills as well. And up on the balcony, Maluki will finish up Piria. And another clean round for Team 1. They're starting to have a little bit more here. A little more momentum being shown, at least by Pesadello. He's getting happy and excited. But he seems to be the only one feeling it right now for Team 1 in terms of being in a bit of a jovial mood. I guess everyone else still feeling the gravity of the situation. And Oplano, this is a very timely tactical pause coming from them. They can get one more investment before they really have to save. And so this is an apt time to call it. It does feel like they've always had an answer whether it be on the CT side or the T side, but in these last couple of rounds, it does truly feel like they've been running into a wall. They've been trying to go for the same kind of standard, stock standard play and just meeting the same results. A solid, astute crossfire and a quick, easy hold for team one has been the outcome for the last couple. So they do really need to try to swap things up, whether it be a read, whether it be a, an understanding of a tendency of team one, they just need to do something different to try and catch out their opponents. And in fact, it's not even going to be an investment. They were on the cusp of being able to do so. It's actually going to be the conservative call, a half buy instead. Some tech nines, some Cavalier P250, and an AK, one hero AK for KNG. The hero AK will have to do some damage. Maybe it can. KNG has been a rock. Utility flying in towards all middle. The nade will do a considerable amount to Piriak, Kaiket, KNG, all sitting in Juliet. They're going to try and go into Balcony now. Or Romeo, as it's also known. And probably go for an A-pop. Hall's pop, potentially, seeing as there's a massive congregation in the apartments as it stands. 
But Team 1 are getting all the banana control. Base is clearing that out. The extra rotation has come through as well. Mob's going to go onto the site proper. Oh, Plano walking into a stack. It is not a round they can necessarily hope to do too much out of. It's more of a, hey, if we get the round that we do, TRK will mop up through. It's actually a team flash from the Keys. A nade from Biria will finish him off. They know where Yell is now up in, pa in Balcony, and IDK will mow him down. Only three rounds now separating these two teams, and it seems that their T sides are the weaknesses for both sides. The only thing is, Team 1 have the chance to close it out on the defense. Yep, and this might be where they take the lead, right at the very end of the game, near the finish line. Very good spray down there to shut down the pistol round, desperate pistol round take, might I add. Oplano, we have never really seen them at a loss, and here we suddenly find them. They have not found any winning recipes, they have not found next to any damage, realistically speaking. It has been the tides turning in favor of Team 1. The question is, can Oplano change things up for their T-side offensive? We do get long last to op as well in effect for Team 1, and that, again, could throw a spanner in the works for the likes of Oplano. The opening pick goes the way of Maluk. The nade damage helps out as well. The Molotov will stall off the push, and now Maluk and Mobs can just sit back and relax and enjoy the flight. As Oplano are going to start moving in towards Banana momentarily, they are recalling Piria, who is over towards Alt Middle and grouping up for this A take. Mobs is playing a very passive angle. This utility should give the clue to Team 1 that it is going to be a B take, and as I say that, Maluka is actually running for the hills towards A, leaving Mobs all alone, but Pesa is coming back to reinforce. The two rifles to hold off the hold is a much better idea than one solo rifle, or even the rifle on the op. The double... Automatic weapons is going to help out massively, and Mobs gets boosted up on top of flowers too. His nade will go through and land perfectly on the Kaike and Piria. Team 1, the utility, is doing its job. The Molotov will land. A smoke is there to play Firefighter, and the push is on, but Oplano actually stalling out behind this time, becoming an enemy. And if they don't hurry, Team 1 will have a much easier win. Mobs is blind, and he's taken down blindsided by Kaike. Pesadella do it all alone. He's spamming through the coffin, put in one. And Oplano, from what should have been an unwinnable situation, are able to get two picks for the price of free. Those are two massive openings that now I think compel Team 1 to save. They're all three grouped up in towards CT spawn. They find a pick relatively soon, and by soon I mean the next like two seconds they might go for it. But with nothing being shown, Oplano, they're not desperate. They're not going to give anything away. They're going to f instead just hold their ground and let Team 1 fall away. 14 to 10, Oplano at long last putting the pieces together. That push through the smoke, I believe it was from Kaike, really starts things off well. He catches out the player falling from the booth. That's Mobs, and from there, the second player just coughing. Can't realistically get more than one, maybe two if he's incredibly lucky. So that's really how Oplano win this round. Very well done from them. Finally going towards B and finally finding something that works. Team 1, though. That was a rather easy to read take. If they're a little bit quicker on the rotations, they could put that one to bed if it happens again in the future. Yeah, Team One kind of just overextended out thought themselves again, didn't they? It, it really does feel like it, yeah. It seems like they're just overthinking when the going gets tough. And that's an issue, because they could have had a couple of rounds for free now, essentially. Not quite free the last one, but they would have had a much better chance of stopping the onslaught. If they wouldn't have thought too hard about it, especially with all that utility flooding in, you should have three players over to that site. It's not, it's a fast rotation from Speedway. You'll be able to make it back to the A site in time. The nade will finish off Mobs, but he has a good amount of damage onto K and G. Yell and the keys also taking some yell more than the keys. But it still leaves Team 1 down a man, and it leaves Pesadilla having to hold the B site solo. He's used his Molotov too. To miss smoke. Mm hmm, that's a. Bit That's of the issue. second miss smoke we've seen in two rounds. That we is saw true. a miss smoke towards the banana choke point where we were looking just there from the sky cam, and we missed the smoke there for the banana retake. So, team one, I think the cracks are beginning to show the nerves are beginning to take effect. Oh, Oplano still look more than calm. They are grouped up. If Pesadella throws a nade, that will be yet another round with tremendous utility damage from o from Team 1, excuse me. And again, they throw it, and again, they do about half HP to Yell and Kaike. That might be the damage required to give them a shot in this hole. Take it out. Going through the smoke. We'll tag one, but that's not one of the lit players. He's taken down. Now IDK in the back lines has to do it all. He drops the bomb. He's bought the deck, but he doesn't get the kill. Nekis finds one. Nekis finds two. And that might be what writes Oplano's ticket 
to 15. It's just TRK. One versus four. Three of his opponents are lit, but again, in the one versus four, do you really attempt the retake here? I don't think so. He'll grab the up. He'll try to run away, and he will get a parting gift as well onto the keys. But still, 1v3, not doable. It's going to be 15 for the T side of Aplana. But look at KNG. He's all the way in brackets, and TRK is stomping around. KNG can give himself an op for free here, and he will do so. Save is denied in 15 2 0 Plano. A 16 10 looking more likely now for them as they would be able to knock Team 1 down into the 0 2 side of the bracket. Interestingly enough, it is an all South and Central American side of the bracket in the 0 and 2 side. Regardless of whether or not Oplano or Team 1 win here today in this round, or Isaris versus Zero Zero Nation, it will be either two or three Brazilian squads and Infinity. Tactical timeout. Very timely. Quite literally backs against the wall here for Team 1. No better time to use it. And I'm very curious to see what the investment will be. I don't know what their economy was like. They had a couple flawless rounds, had a couple convincing victories, but the last two could be backbreakers, especially with that op being taken away there. Yeah, it is rather desperate. We do have the op for Maluk at the very least, but a FAMAS for Mobs and an MP9 for Pesadello leaves you wanting more. No op again for KNG, even though he had the opportunity for a free one. I find that interesting. He likes the T side without the op, and I don't blame him. It's a lot more mobile. It's a lot more free on this map in particular. Overpass, I'm sure we would see KNG with a big green gun. Does too, obviously. But here, he doesn't. It's utility out in hand for Team 1, and Mobs gets punished for it on the initial. KNG entering up banana, tries to get the second, but Yell is right there for the trade. It's a two-for-one pick towards B for Oplano, but they also have some brackets control as well. TRK might have been spotted by Nikiz, who turned around at the right time. Kaik is in boiler as well. But it's a 2-2 split for the CT side, or for the T side, and the CT side has put more players towards the A side of things. Only one lone Maluk holding down on B, and Kaike is falling off. They're leaving the keys to just lurk around A, cut off the rotations, and basically just cut off Team 1 at the source here. Maluk needs two. Two at minimum, I would say. And it is possible, seeing as Yell is tagged, the issue is that it's an op, and that's going to be just a very difficult weapon, especially when it's forced out by the utility. But Oplano might be getting into their own heads here, hoping to pull a rotation. They're now going back towards A, and he's in the back line. Timing's everything for this play. He needs to find something here before the take comes in proper, or it could get completely stopped here by the two-person stack. TRK. His attention's taken. This will be the perfect time to strike. Neki drops IDK, and there we go. Both kills coming in by the flank, and now it's Maluka. He had the op, he now has the AK, and he has the world against him. One versus four. He's stomping up middle. Now going to a walk. Nope, he's going to go for the stomp. And there's a crossfire. That was at the brackets. Maluka, no shot in this one. Pedia is the one that caps it off. And Oplano take the victory 16 to 10 over their adversaries. Very well done. They are now one in one. Team 1 dropped to 0 and 2, and they will now be fighting for survival in the IEM Road to Rio Americas. It's going to be a very brutal time now for Team 1, a match they pretty much had to win to give themselves a chance at qualification for the Major, but Oplano were a step ahead. They read the game better.